get to work in some fairly good sized houses here in London but see some atrocious plumbing this job was an interesting one I've been here loads of times for Viesman there's a few design faults with the 200WB 2B and, uh, had a few problems with Lambda Pro sensors um, and a very common problem with these is uh, leaky flu, leak flue gaskets I don't think you can see in there but there's a lot of corrosion inside this boiler you can see at the bottom there where the head, ga where the, uh, head gasket um, where the gasket comes loose on the top of the flue just give you a let's try and get some light So in there, that rubber gasket comes loose and the POCs leak into the case and they start corroding all the case, as you can see in there. We get condensed run down the outside of the hex. And you can see down there, we'll be running down there. It drips in the bottom of the boiler and starts just eating the case away. Now this is quite common on this model. Uh, had a similar problem on the WB1A. And uh, I think they've got to grips with it now. But, um, of course, proper testing, proper servicing would have seen this and stopped the damage. You can see on this one, I've got it running at the moment, but that's actually loose as well. I think you can see, try and get the light in there. Uh, yeah, there you go. You can see that one's loose. I've got to strip this down and get that one back in place. And I've got this on another job I've done as well. I'll go back and sort it on another one. But anyway, it's a 35 kilowatt boiler. And uh, when I first came, I'll take you on the other side. There was two of them. There was one in this side as well. This header was horizontal on the floor down here, and the boiler was just put above it, and just couldn't get to anything. Couldn't really work on the boiler at all. Absolute nightmare. And the customer asked me to come and replace both boilers and uh, very reluctant to replace 200, so they're very, very good boilers. So I didn't. Basically, I looked at the controls, did a heat loss calculation of the house. Heat loss, very quick one, not on the whole house, came at 45 kilowatts. Uh, but I looked at the controls, there was a summer winter switch on it, and the boilers fired one in the morning, one in the evening on the way it set up, no weather comp on this. Um, and there was a summer winter switch, which would kick both boilers in. But the customer didn't know about summer winter switch, and has run this for almost five years on just one 35 kilowatt boiler and hasn't been cold. So basically a 35 kilowatt boiler, one 35 kilowatt boiler has been enough to run this property all of this time. So rather than rip out two, two boilers, uh, one, of them was, one of them was much worse condition and needed to be replaced, the other one was saveable. Uh, but rather than rip out two and put two no ones in, I just ripped out the one that couldn't be saved. I've now got a stockpile of parts to sort out the one on the other side. Uh, lifted the header up, raised it horizontally, stuck an automatic air vent on it, couldn't get a spire atop in time and Mark Bocchetti's not on my friends list anymore. And, um, no, I couldn't give him a shout and find out where to get them from, so that's gone by the by, just got one standard one. Full bore valve on the bottom was added in. I put a return filter in just to give the boiler an extra layer of protection. Uh, I always objected to these filters, actually, inline filters, um, and I've often told people not to put them in, but just recently I've changed my mind, having seen quite large chunks of debris come back from systems that you know, we believe to have been flushed, and I just thought, well, for the sake of one of those on the service, it was easy enough to do. Isolation taps, by the way, are out of sight, around the back. You can just see one around this side. And the gate valves, but they work really, really well on these the big ones. Uh, Residual pump head. Obviously I've got the boiler firing up the low loss header. This is the pump they put in for the house, so I haven't replaced it. I've used the same one, um, 2580, and I've just adjusted it down to setting two rather than on setting three, because the, the noise of the velocity in the pipe right there was a bit high. Um, as we know, 35 kilowatts and 22 mil um, should be within our limits, and I didn't want to pipe this up in anything bigger in here. Yeah pain to do and wasn't necessary. It's only a short length and goes into 32 up the back there. 32's considerably oversized for this. Um, anyway, the original quote um, for 
putting the job right included raising the roof on here to give me room to put the two boilers in, changing it all round. Um, I think came in with a builder about 7,000. Um, final bill for this solution, um, taking out one boiler, putting this right, rebuilding the other boiler, it'll be about 900 quid. Both those prices plus that. Um, very, very happy customer. They're moving anyway, so they didn't want to spend loads of money and they haven't had to. This is now nice and easy to service, you get to everything. Um, the isolation valves work really well as I say, so I'm bothered with uh, isolating pump valves. Just use pump unions. Got a drain points everywhere as you can see, so everything's easy to drain down. I don't really like these, but I haven't, still haven't got hold of any of the newer um, train cocks that we like on the forum. So uh, still using those old things. But um, yeah, oh, um, weather comp. Now, I personally would put weather comp on this, but the customer's moving. It costs quite a lot of money to get the kit. It's an old retro kit anyway. Um, these controls aren't, uh, aren't the current controls. So we're giving it a miss. But a lot of the stress and strain on these boilers have been due to the fact it wasn't weather comped. And uh, the boilers are just running flat out, switching on and off all the time and cycling. And uh, doesn't do them any favors at all. 